hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. A reading from the book of Acts. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven, there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear, each of us, in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. 
No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. reading from the book of Ephesians. All who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if, in fact, we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. The word of the Lord.
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Philip said to Jesus, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, because he abides with you, and he will be in you. The Gospel of the Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our Redeemer. Amen. Early one morning last month, I was walking our dog, Esme, around the neighbourhood, which I do most mornings. It's a blissful time. We have our usual route that extends for two miles, and it gives me time to listen to prayer podcasts, one of the better inventions birthed by the digital revolution. So it's half an hour of Esme, me, and God. But that morning, we were joined by a fourth person. Actually, we weren't so much joined as yelled at. We were passing a house when a gruff voice boomed from the front porch. Curb your dog, it demanded. I looked in the direction of the voice and uh, there was an unhappy looking man who clearly hadn't had enough sleep. Now, before you think that Esme must have been rampaging through his front yard, digging up his prized petunias and terrorising his pet rabbit, no, she was simply sniffing the edge of his lawn. She was on her lead, standing on the sidewalk, just sniffing. Curb your dog, repeated Captain Grumpy. Now, I have to tell you that I have a deep fear of this sort of conflict. When someone shouts at me, it throws me off for days. And I have a strategy to use when this happens. I sheepishly apologise, even if I've done nothing wrong, and quickly slink away. But this morning was different. I don't know what it was, maybe it was the smell of spring in the air, but I felt a surge of assertiveness. I found myself answering back. She's only sniffing, I protested, and again the owner of the lawn ordered me, curb your dog, your dog should be on the curb side of you. And I thought, that's not what curb means. <laughs> This guy's got his curbs confused. Uh, the curb at the side of the road has got nothing to do with the curb of restraining your dog. So I had a vision of this man curbing his enthusiasm, which clearly he did quite a lot, uh, by reaching into his chest, uh, pulling out his enthusiasm and placing it at the side of the road next to the recycling. 
Now, I was pretty sure that I was right and that curb meaning restrain is totally unrelated to the curb at the edge of the sidewalk. I knew I was right because in Britain, the two words are spelled very differently. When you curb your dog, you spell it C-U-R-B, but that thing at the side of the road is spelled K-E-R-B. I guess at some point between the English settling in Jamestown, Virginia and now, someone thought that having different spellings for two words that sound exactly the same was rather confusing and so they decided to kick the K-E-R-B to the K-E-R-B. I suspect this was the same person who beheld the word tonight and thought that G and that H make things very complicated. We should really spell it T-O-N-I-T-E. So, feeling pretty righteous because I had God on my side, don't forget this man was interrupting my prayer time, and I had the entire English language batting for me, I walked on. And as I went, I pondered George Bernard Shaw's statement that the British and the Americans are two peoples separated by a common language. How much better is the life designed by God? The life we read about every Pentecost, when people of different cultures, nations and languages have their barriers demolished by the Holy Spirit. Many thousands of devout Jewish pilgrims had crammed into Jerusalem that weekend. What a vibrant, exciting city it must have been that day. Yet along with the thrill of all that diversity, there's the inevitable frustration of people not being able to understand each other. But unlike my encounter with the man and his lawn, here are not two people separated by a common language, but dozens of people, whole ethnic groups, joined together by the work of God, the drenching of the Holy Spirit. There is understanding, there is unity, along with their diversity. Jesus promised it in the Gospel lesson. The Father will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of Truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, because he abides with you, and he will be in you. That word translated advocate is very flexible. Other versions of the Bible translate it comforter, helper, counsellor, companion, friend. Not just to be with us, but to be inside us. When I studied French and German at high school, there was an object I longed for, I craved it. I would have breezed through assignments and exams. It would have made me look so smart. It was the Babelfish. The Babelfish is the creation of Douglas Adams, the author of The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. It is a small, yellow, leech-like fish that processes human brain waves. And if you stick one in your ear, you can instantly understand anything said to you in any language. Forty years later, what seemed like a ridiculous work of fiction, something you put in your ear and it would translate for you, can be yours for a hundred bucks, and we call it the smart earphone. So this morning, I want to add a new translation of the word for advocate in our Bible version. Comforter, helper, counsellor, companion, friend, and now Babelfish. God the Father has given us the Holy Spirit to be in us and to translate what we hear from our brothers and sisters with the goal of mutual understanding, harmony and peace. Because we need it.
These are days of painful division. We all know it and we are all grieved by it. And most of us are willing to admit we've been infected by it. And it is an infection. You know how it is. We are expected to divide ourselves. The barriers we are told to build are political, social, cultural, religious, sporting, just about everything really, and they touch every aspect of our lives. And I confess I have not discovered a way of remaining 100% safe from those malicious forces that try to divide us. You see, anger sells. Having an enemy makes us feel secure. It gives us identity and belonging. So it is that I see the vehicle someone drives and I label them. I hear the music playing on their radio and I classify them. I notice how they take their coffee and I make a judgment about them. I glance in their shopping cart for five seconds and I think I can predict not just how they will vote in November, but what they believe about climate change, gun control, the causes of inflation, the pandemic, and who should be the starting quarterback of the New York Giants. Just from their shopping cart. I actually found a website that showed photos of the insides of people's fridges and invited me to guess the politics of the fridge owners. And I got a really high score. <laughs> what have we become when even the snack food we choose reveals what side we're on in the culture wars? So this week I found myself feeling frustrated and asking God how we can remain undefiled by the spirit that lures us into forming factions, judging, rejecting, and dividing, and how we can embrace one another, not just despite our differences, but because of them. Because we recognize we are incomplete without each other. Our task is to joyfully listen to the views of Christians we disagree with because we know that they are made in God's image, they have God's spirit, and they have an experience of God's revelation that I do not have. Pentecost 2022 is God's big invitation to open ourselves more and more to the influence of the Holy Spirit so that I can hear the voices of people who are not like me and understand them, not just their words, but their hearts. God helps us filter out the cultural wrappings to hear the real person and then to empathize, and then to love. But we need God to provide that translation service. Without it, the person I disagree with sounds like my enemy. She sounds like someone who wants to do evil things. He sounds like a person who wishes me ill. They sound like folk who want to take away my rights or my beliefs or my lifestyle. Let us ask for God's spirit this Pentecost day to lavish us with this supernatural gift of listening to the other and truly hearing, hearing their pain, their fear, their vulnerability, their belovedness. It may sound like gibberish in my ears. It may seem like nonsense. It may seem dangerous. It may provoke fear within me. But let's seek God's help to look beyond the words to the person I need in my life. Douglas Adams, of course, took the name of his little yellow creature from the story of the Tower of Babel in Genesis. That is a tale of pride going before a fall. In the story, everyone in the world has the same language, and in their narcissism, they work together to build a tower that will reach heaven, a monument to their hubris. 
and God intervenes by confusing their speech so they end up speaking different languages. And because they can't communicate with each other, their blasphemous shrine to human arrogance remains incomplete. Pentecost heals that confusion and chaos. What appears to be a bewildering event, people speaking languages they have not learned, so bewildering that onlookers think they're drunk, is actually a moment of healing. The resolution of a deep and festering wound sustained thousands of years earlier. Now, in the public square in Jerusalem, God's healing spirit comes and people's languages change again. Not into the same language, but into a glorious diversity of sound that excludes no one from the gift of hearing and the gift of being heard. Everyone can understand, no matter where they're from. Language used to divide. It still does. Difference used to cause friction, just like now. But on the day of Pentecost, all languages are brought together into a united song of praise to the God of all peoples. There is still diversity, but there's unity of purpose and of heart. No wonder they call Pentecost the birthday of the church. So don't curb your enthusiasm. It's Pentecost, a day of wild celebration. Don't curb your emotions. If we can't feel joy today, then when can we? Don't curb your heart. Let it expand and let it loose. Open it to God's translating spirit and in our diversity, celebrate unity. Amen. Let us pray. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for our bishopship, for this gathering, and for all ministers and people. Pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people especially the people of Ukraine. Pray for justice and peace. 
I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble. Today we pray especially for Adler, Alice, Amy, Andreas, Andrew, Andy, Angelo, Anne, Beverly, Carol, Charlotte, Chris, Cynthia, Dick, Emma, George, Glenn, Greg, Heather. We pray for Kathy, Kristen, Christy, Kisa, Lisa, Marie, Marjorie, Mary Merle, Nancy, Nathaniel, Nicole, Olivia, Pam, Phil, Quentin, Rob, Robin, Samantha, Shelley, Stephen, Steve, Susan, Vinny, and Wendy. Are there others? I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of him. Pray that they may find and be found by him. I ask your prayers for the departed. Pray for those who have died. We remember today especially Francis E. Frowery and James H. Hutchinson, in whose memories the flowers have been given. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. Almighty God, by your Holy Spirit, you have made us one with your saints in heaven and on earth. Grant that in our earthly pilgrimage we may always be supported by this fellowship of love and prayer, and know ourselves to be surrounded by their witness to your power and mercy. We ask this for the sake of Jesus Christ, in whom all our intercessions are acceptable through the Spirit, and who lives and reigns forever and ever. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you, and God heard into you by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not
uh, to hear one another, to talk, to support each other on the theme uh, of gun violence. Uh, what we won't be doing is having a, a structured meeting uh, and talking about uh, public policy and things like that. We're just going to be talking about how this topic is for us. Um, you know, we've been affected, I think, even in communities that haven't been touched by a, an actual event of gun violence. Uh, we still have been touched by the news. Uh, and um, it's good to have that opportunity to talk in a place where there's no judgment, but where there's mutual respect and support. Good evening, good morning, kids. Good to see you all. Uh, so that is at six o'clock on Thursday evening. We'll, we'll be in the lounge, but if the gathering is too large, we'll then relocate. And it will end whenever we stop talking. Uh, Friday is a night of celebration, but also with uh, uh, a taste of bitterness in our mouths. It is the day in which we uh, celebrate uh, Chris's ministry among us as it comes to a conclusion and all the great things that God has done with and through him in the year that he's been here. Um, so that's going to be in uh, the Hammersley Hall. If the weather's like this, we can spill out onto the grass as well. So, uh, so this won't be an event in which you uh, uh, necessarily need to fear being in close contact with folk in an indoor space. At uh, six o'clock, there will be food. Uh, it'll be fairly substantial, so there's no need to eat before you come. Uh, and we will hope to wrap things up at eight o'clock. So come along and enjoy the evening and say farewells to Chris and wish him well on the next stage he's going to be on. And so we come to the Lord's table and as we do so, we bring to him symbols of our lives and lives.
It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. In fulfillment of his promise, the Holy Spirit came down from heaven, lighting upon the disciples to lead them into all truth, uniting peoples of many tongues in confession of one faith, and giving to your church the power to preach the gospel to all nations. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
God give you the spirit of truth. May Christ Jesus work for you as you work for him. And may the Holy Spirit bear witness within you of the love and peace that are yours in Christ. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia.